Well, thank you, Paul, for this honor. I will start right on my topic because time is very short. This is a very different kind of talk that I'm going to give. I've titled My Journey of Brain. I gave this talk two, three months back in university. This is a very shortened version of this, but let me move fast. As a student, in my high school, I was trying to be a particular physicist. I moved to college. At that time, I worked on black holes and so on. I moved to universe. And then when I was doing my research, actually, at University of California, Berkeley and Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory, it was a nuclear fusion, which is sun. So I came from universe to sun. And I worked for about 20 years in that area. I will not describe nuclear fusion at two places in India. These are the only two centers in India. And I was a modeling and simulation person, but I moved into experiments because I realized that just modeling will not help unless I can also do the experiments. So I was in charge of these reactors. This is a larger one. And then in 2002, I moved out from this to university. And I was working on in India's moon mission. So I came from universe to sun to moon. <laughs> and here I was, India's second moon mission, which is not yet gone, I was working on that. One of the projects was to actually try to find if there's water on the moon by throwing little small balls inside the permanently shadowed craters of the moon. And they were supposed to measure if there's water and send the data back. I'm not going to go into details. And then some stays, this was the indo russian collaboration and slowly the Russian collaboration was moving out. So I was asked to actually design a complete system which will land, uh, which will after the uh, lander lands on the moon. All the experiments that will be done will be done by the single system that was to be designed by me. So this is the system that I designed. It was supposed to go down 1.5 meters into the lunar surface collect samples, do seismic measurements, and all the other kind of things. And all that had to be done within five kilograms and 20 watts of power. There was 40 watt of solar panel, half of that was available. It was a challenge. Thankfully, I had a few international collaborators who helped me in this. Of course, the system has not gone, and so it was not funded fully, so I will not talk more about this. From the moon, I started to work on problems of Earth. <laughs> I was working on agriculture. I was working on wildlife with Wildlife Institute of India. Uh, there were a number of projects. One was to track the swamp deer, where you put a little GPS, but the data does not go to satellite. The animals talk to each other, and data is somewhat similar to a Princeton project. Uh, let me leave out the details here. There's a second one, little small turtle, which does not go into water. It's only, weight is about 500 grams or less. Here we cannot put GPS, the weight is too much. You can only put 20 grams maximum. We do triangle, uh, some kind of, uh, you set a grid of receiving a station and collect the signals and try to triangulate it and find out the location. Then I had another project where to, to monitor tigers, where it was the infrared image sensor network. So as the tiger moves in the forest, we keep tracking it. Again, I'm not going to details, but it was important to get the stripes on the tiger. Uh, clearly by which you can identify each tiger has unique stripe. So uh, the color was not important, but you had to make sure that you take the picture in the dark and don't disturb the tiger. So there should be no sound, no flash of light. So it was infrared flash that we had put in and no sound was there. Let me leave out these details. The fourth one was to monitor purple frogs. It's a very rare species. Here we're listening to the sound that is being made by them. And from the sound in the background, we figure out if this particular species has come out. It remains underground most of the time. So I discovered in 2003, about 10 years, 10, 11 years back, the one on the right side is in Suriname. So this was supposed to have survived millions of years, but was only discovered very recently. Here, so this was listening to sound and making sure that we capture the sound, analyze the sound, and figure out whether this particular species has come out, and then record the location, and so on and so forth. Uh, I will also mention this project, although we did not take it, but it's of importance to YASA scientists. This was an Indo-Australian project which we're working on where we're trying to look at effect of climate change on barrier re uh, coral reefs. And it was to be done in Great Barrier Reef in Australia and Lakshadweep Island in India. And we're going to monitor several parameters uh, uh, along the depth of the ocean, very close to the uh, areas where the coral reef was. Let me now come to the part that I wanted to really focus. So I came from universe to sun to moon to earth and now to human body. Okay. And now I got interested through some student project to deal with problems of severe disability. And the first project, okay, let me, let me make this disclaimer. I'm not an expert of neuroscience. 
I'm not a medical doctor or health care, but you will see many things which to me sound like miracles. And uh, But uh, I'm not expert in any of these things, uh, so just take it with a pinch of salt. So I started working with uh, assistive technology person through a student project where people who did not have finger movement, many who have cerebral palsy or other uh, issues, how do they operate a television or something like that? Because they cannot press the remote control button. So I have designed a system which was to use hand gesture to operate things. So you do like this, TV channel goes up, TV channel goes down, volume goes down, volume goes up. We tested this with a number of trials we did with various users. And finally, we made devices which were given to users. The two different devices, I'm not going to details. When we did this, then we said, why only television, why not other things? So light, fan, air conditioner, music system, computer. We made sure that people could operate each of these systems by the same device. You can see that we have given to users uh, these two brothers here, both from Delhi, this girl from Delhi. She cannot move her legs, she cannot speak. She has very little control over hand movement. She, she tries to move her hand up, it goes very hard. If she tries to you know, put her hand down, it, she just hits it very hard. Uh, she wanted to watch TV, but she needed somebody's help. After we gave her this device, her first reaction was to throw everybody out of the room. She wanted to watch the channel the way she wanted because she, want, she had for the first time in her life the independence to be able to select the channel that she wanted. So her first reaction was completely reversed. Earlier she wanted somebody to be there with her, now she wanted nobody to be there. That's the kind of change that brought to life and it changed my life personally because I could see that the science and technology could help people in this way. And so my focus started to, to you know, I moved around the country to many places. Also thanks to social networking, I could get in touch with a lot of people who were, which was not possible otherwise. I connected a lot of people, people asked me a lot of questions. I have this problem, I have that problem, can you help me? <clears throat> it was not possible to help in all cases, but I came across the problems that people were facing. This girl, for example, she lost both her hand and one leg. She had only one leg. She's an excellent artist. She's got many awards. She had a dream that can I drive a wheelchair? Okay. Because she doesn't have hands. So I gave her something that she could operate with her you know, feet. And the joystick was moved here. And she could start to operate this. And the day she received, she immediately went to a temple to pray to God. <clears throat> Uh, as I came along with many people, the touch screen technology came along, tablets, mobile phones. So we made sure that many of these could be used. People who are not able to communicate through touch screen, they can communicate and so on. I'm not going to go into details. One of the problems we found out that Indian languages did not have these systems. So they were available in American English, American context. If you wanted uh, Indian you know, uh, food, you could not do that because there's only burger button to be pressed there. <laughs> so, so we made sure that you could make it customizable to Indian language or any other language for that matter, any language or any, any, any picture that you can put in there. Uh, and I help many people through these systems. Let me not go into details here. When I was giving these devices, many people came to me, some who did not have hand or could not move hand or did not have voice. They said, what about us? Can you help us? And I saw this slogan in a school that my family runs, count the ability, not the disability. Look at the positive aspects and not the negative aspects. Don't say the person does not have hand, but look at what the person can do rather than what he or she cannot do. So I decided that it, irrespective of what the person is, whatever their ability, let's make sure that they can use that. So on the left side, what you have here is ability, uh, part of the presentation is cut off. Uh, it says hand and leg movement, I could use some technology, head movement, voice, eye movement or eye blink. There was a girl whose mother said that she can only communicate through blink of her eyes or through movement of eyes. Can you help? In certain cases, even that is not their facial expressions or conscious thought or muscle movement. I decided that irrespective of whichever ability you have, we can use technology to make sure that they can perform the task that they desire. The one on the right hand side are the kind of technology that I've used. Uh, the green bullets here mean that they have been given to users. Yellow means they have been done in the lab. And white means we are still working on this. The one that I'm going to focus more on this BCI brain computer interface part, where we capture the brain waves, interpret that, and you'll see that 
that is being used for eye movement, eye blinks, facial expression, and conscious thought. So these three are uh, through brain computer interface. Uh, that was to get the input from the user. What can they do? So we started with things like light, fan, TV, computer. We also added a speech synthesis to make sure that they can speak, also operate wheelchair, but they had many other desires, different users. So we made sure that they can do all of this. But what was very important to be able to provide them employment opportunities. So if they can operate a simple electric machinery, for example, they can operate a security barrier gate, or they can operate a simple drill machine through their gesture, through head movement, or their thought, they could have an employment. They could do simple tasks. Uh, so we made sure that that was also possible. Let me come to the brain part. That's where my journey is right now. Uh, brain computer interface, many of you are aware, has been going for quite some time. Cochlear implant is one of the uh, successful story of this. Uh, brain computer interface, typically we capture the EG waves. Of course, there are other ways to doing it, but this is the one that is the simplest. Uh, interpretation of the EG waves was very difficult. It was a complex task. But due to advancement technology, it become possible to capture this in real time and interpret it. The first task that was done with these was to make sure that people can play computer games. So last three, four years, computer games became an important part for development of these. And that made sure that it became cheaper, it became user friendly. So what I thought that can I take advantage of this and help people who are not able to perform tasks or not able to communicate otherwise. And let me leave out the details here, but this is around July 2011 that I demonstrated that through my facial expressions, like I could smile and a light bulb will glow or a TV cannot be operated or through my blink of eyes, I can do things. I demonstrated this and then I was looking for users whom I can help. I talked to various people, hospitals and so on. Finally, I came across a gentleman. He is from the, one of the most management, famous management institute in, uh, in India who at a very young age of 32 had a brainstem stroke and he lost his hand leg movement, he lost his voice. He could hear and see. He could take input but he could not express. Only way he could communicate was blink of his eyes. So about two, slightly more than two years, we provided him something through which he could start to, to type on the computer by himself. You will see uh, the video, this is not an edited video, it's just uh, the first video that we had, where what we have done is capturing his head movement and the mouse cursor movement is controlled by the head movement and the blink of his eyes is captured through brain waves. And so we give him a screen, uh, on screen keyboard, he moves the, the cursor and whichever character he wants to type, he blinks his eyes. So that way he starts to type on the computer. The first thing that he got to type, he wanted to type after 13 years that he could not communicate was his wife's name. Jayasri was short from Jaya. J -A -Y -S. He is trying to start typing that name. It took him three to four minutes to type those four letters, but that the beginning had been done. And after that, of course, uh, we improved the system further. Next day, we demonstrated how he could control light and other things by blink of his eyes. You can see this doing it and look at the happiness in his face. Uh, he's just controlling the light bulb and you will see a smile on his face. Uh, towards the end of this video, he almost uh, burst into laughter like a small child. Uh, we improved the system further uh, and he has been regularly writing this. In fact, this is the blog he wrote using this system, I can type. And it was a very hard rendering situation because for 13 years he was not in a position to do anything by himself. Uh, this is another story. Each one of these has a story. This girl was chief animator for a famous uh, movie. And the movie got only one award that was for animation. The day she gave party, night of that she was hit by a drunk driver when she lost everything suddenly. So from height of glory, she was down. She was in coma for a long time. Finally, when she recovered, she was neck down paralyzed. Uh, computer was her life as an animator. So within two, three minutes of once I showed her, she started to type. I promised that I'll get her back to animation, whatever condition she is in. Uh, there are many other people, I will skip the, the stories here. Then I had requests from people who are in vegetative state. I think it's, you're missing out the top part of the line. Who are in vegetative state. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, some, some frequencies. So how do we capture their, are they understanding us? Uh, 
So I tried to do this. What we tried to do in this case is that we capture their brain waves in real time in three dimensions and trying to see if they're responding to us. So if we say something and if their response is consistent, then we can map yes and no to two different things. And there was some work done in, I think, UK. So we looked at that. I've not been successful with this, but I thought I'll share the story anyway. Uh, in fact, one of the last one I was trying this was a ex vice chancellor of university who had due to stroke, he went into this condition. When I looked at this, all these things, it was very interesting. And I thought that, can I identify learning disability in a child before the symptoms appear through school exams and so on? So I looked at the literature and I found that if you can capture beta one to theta ratio, that's lower, then the child is likely to have learning disability. Okay. This was based on one scientist's research. So my next question was that, can I improve in this condition? It's good to know that, that the person may have learned it, but can I improve it? So I looked at the various things. The two techniques that came across was brain entrainment and neurofeedback. And I also realized that there are a number of ancient Indian techniques which also help in the same way. The efficiency may vary from one to other, and I'm not sure right now which one is the more efficient one, unless we do uh, more experiments. But I started to experiment with this. I started to help children in various conditions like Down syndrome, ADD, ADHD, and so on. But I also realized that I can help adults who suffer from insomnia, depression, migraine, all kind of uh, you know, mental health uh, problems without using any medicine. So that was important that normally if I have insomnia, doctors will give me something, they put me to sleep, but I'm adding chemicals to my body, which has side effect. So here through audiovisual stimulus, I could enhance the condition of the person and make them feel better. The first person to be helped by, I was a professor, so of course one of the students I helped. And within three days, she, she, on my Facebook, she wrote that she's feeling in heaven. Uh, she used to have you know, frequent deep depression uh, situation. I especially this for you, Don, actually, because one of my school seniors, I'd mentioned this to you, was a child mass prodigy and a PhD from Berkeley in the 1960s. Late 70s started to show symptoms of schizophrenia. In fact, he went missing for a few years in the 1980s, late 1980s, and was discovered uh, doing riffraff, somehow surviving. I met him a few months back, and uh, it was difficult to talk to him, because sometimes he will talk, and sometimes we didn't know what he was talking. Uh, it's not very clear here, but there's writing on his wall. I didn't know how to help him. I, because he was not going to be cooperative. I suggested some things, music I gave, some sound stimulus to his family members, who used to just play it in the night before he was sleeping. And after some time, they shared with me that he has shown some improvements. He's playing a musical instrument by himself, which they had never expected in the last so many years. So a very, very small improvement, but it's an improvement in the right direction. Uh, Something strange happened. I suffered a health problem due to gallstone. Uh, many of you might be familiar with severe pain. I was asked to do surgery of gallbladder. I decided to look at alternates and learn a naturopathic technique to remove gallstones. This was a book written by German-American Andreas Morris, who came to India at the age of 21 to solve his own health problems. And then since then, he, till he expired last year, he shared this. He's written many books. After I saw my own issue of gallbladder stones which were removed and confirmed by ultrasound, I shared this information with many people. And when I read that book, I realized that a lot of health conditions, it can help people. And what there was a miracle story, there was a lady with 15 years of severe mental disorder, and I was helping her with brain entrainment. I shared this information with her, and I did not know that it's going to help her or not. And this is her own writing. She says, writes that you know, she suffered from all kinds of problems. She tried everything, but nothing was helping. And she went through this process of doing this cleaning process of her gallbladder and liver. Okay. And after that, she recovered from the 15 years of uh, severe mental disorder, all the problems. And she used to have memory. She couldn't retain things in memory. Everything came back to her. She could not give exams. She started to give exams. I wrote, shared this is a miracle. But when I thought about it, I realized that our education system, our learning process, is not 
holistic. We don't look at the food that the child is eating, the time the child is sleeping. We only look at the, the content being taught in the classrooms and so on in exams. So I realized that when this lady for 15 years could not learn, and now this process of cleaning her internal organs brought her back, how can we ignore such aspects from our learning process? So I thought there must be a holistic approach to learning which integrates food, body, and mind into learning process. Some of the Indian systems, which we call Gurukul system, has focus, had focused on that, but slowly we lost most of this. We did a workshop at a school that we, my family runs where we call all the relevant people and a concept of holistic creative learning was originated. Here, I'm not going into details again. There's no time. But our target is to make sure that all, here I mentioned future citizens because from Indian point of view, but that clearly for anybody, are able to develop their full potential of mind. They, their brain could be fully, you know, they could learn maximum uh, within the constraint that they have. And for that, we must do everything that is possible. One of the key elements of this is making sure that internal organs are kept clean. This, the two, three things that you see here, liver cleansing, kidney cleansing, colon cleansing, of course, with the liver, gallbladder also gets clean. If you do this carrier, there are a few other processes that uh, Indian traditional uh, knowledge has. It actually makes sure that your body functions in a much improved way. Going back to the lady's story, why she suddenly improved? Was there science behind it? Somebody explained to me, one of the top scientists, he was Director General of Council of Scientific and Industry Research. He said that it's to do with ammonia. And I did not know what ammonia has to do in this. So I asked him, that, can you tell me what is ammonia has to do with this? He said, you go back and look at my paper, which I've written 10 years back. I said, please explain me, I'll look at the paper later. He said that body produces ammonia due to various processes. Liver neutralizes it, converts into urea, it goes out through urine. But for some reason, if liver is not doing the task, the ammonia level in the body starts to increase. And through blood, it goes into brain, and there is a filter in the brain, BBB, brain blood barrier or blood brain barrier, which tries to stop impurities, but ammonia cannot be stopped, so it goes right into the brain and plays a hook. He said that whatever you did with liver, I do not know. But if the liver started to function and the ammonia level started to go down, her brain started to improve. So that started to make sense. And then I talked to, you know, I looked at the web, I talked to neurologists and so on. They said, yes, it's right, but we don't know how to fix liver. So what we do is to give chemicals to try to suppress ammonia. Of course, each of the chemicals that you have has, has you know, side effect. So coming, uh, I'm closing the talk here by saying that combining India's traditional knowledge and modern science is a winning combination of mankind. There's a lot of knowledge that we have had for 2,000, 3,000 years. It is possible to solve many problems of body and mind in a more holistic manner than we are doing now. And I am personally focusing on some aspects of it. So thank you very much. I'll stop here. If there are any questions, please.